Next, we will discuss auscultation of the heart and the different listening posts for the different valve sounds. The aortic listening post, which you can see in the top right of the screen, is at the second intercostal space on the right sternal border. The aortic area is where you listen for systolic murmurs of aortic stenosis, as well as flow murmurs, which are commonly seen in patients that have anemia, and aortic valve sclerosis, or calcification and hardening of the aortic valve. The pulmonic area is just across the sternum on the left second intercostal space. And the pulmonic area is where you listen for systolic ejection murmurs of pulmonic stenosis, as well as flow murmurs, for example, in patients with an atrial septal defect. As shown at the bottom of the page, atrial septal defects commonly present with a pulmonary flow murmur because of increased flow through the pulmonic valve because of left to right shunting. Left to right shunting means that blood from the left atrium goes to the right atrium, and therefore you see a greater amount of flow through the pulmonic valve than you normally would, because all of that blood going into the right atrium then has to go to the right ventricle and then through the pulmonic valve into the pulmonary artery. The blood flow across the atrial septal defect from left to right generally does not cause an audible murmur, because the pressures are so low and the pressure gradient is so small across that small atrial septal defect. But what you will hear in a patient with an atrial septal defect is a flow murmur in the pulmonic area. At the left sternal border, you can hear different heart sounds, including a diastolic murmur, which is commonly heard in aortic regurgitation and pulmonic regurgitation, as well as the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy sound, which is a systolic murmur. And this is generally heard along the entire left sternal border. So this is not one of the classic listening posts per se, but it's much easier to hear aortic regurgitation at the left sternal border than it is the actual aortic area, for example. So the left sternal border is where you listen for these regurgitant sounds. The systolic murmur of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, remember, is caused by a collapse of the left ventricle during systole. And so you want to listen to the area just above the left ventricle, which is at the left sternal border, which is also just near the left ventricular outflow tract, so the area just below the aortic valve. And this is why you hear the murmur of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy at the area of the left sternal border. The tricuspid listening area is approximately at the fourth or fifth intercostal space at the left sternal border. And the tricuspid listening area will allow you to hear the systolic murmur of tricuspid regurgitation, as well as the actual sound of a ventricular septal defect, and as well as the diastolic murmur of tricuspid stenosis. Tricuspid stenosis is generally a very rare sound, is not commonly heard. You will also see an increased flow across the tricuspid valve in a patient with an atrial septal defect because of increased left to right shunting and increased flow across the tricuspid valve. The mitral valve listening post is approximately at the midclavicular to axillary border on the left side in the fifth intercostal space. And in the mitral listening post, you will hear the systolic murmur of mitral valve regurgitation when it occurs, as well as the diastolic murmur of mitral valve stenosis. Now let's briefly discuss the heart murmurs. The first murmur that we will discuss is mitral and tricuspid valve regurgitation. Remember that mitral and tricuspid regurgitation occurs when the valve has a leak, and that is when the valve does allow backflow of blood when it should be holding tight. Remember that the mitral valve generally should not allow blood to go back from the left ventricle into the atrium, and during systole, when the valve should be closed, this valve is allowing a leakage of blood back from the left ventricle into the left atrium. So we'll discuss these two murmurs, MR and TR, just based on their period in the cardiac cycle and not based on their listening post. Mitral regurgitation is a holosystolic murmur and is a high-pitched blowing murmur. Mitral regurgitation occurs loudest at the apex of the heart at the mitral valve listening post, and this murmur will then radiate towards the axilla.
So you will hear this murmur loudest at the apex of the heart, but then you will hear it, but less loudly in the axilla or the armpit. This murmur is enhanced or made louder by maneuvers that increase the total peripheral resistance, for example, squatting or hand grip exercises, or increased left atrial return, for example, expiration. Mitral valve is often due to ischemic heart disease, mitral valve prolapse, or left ventricular dilatation. Tricuspid valve regurgitation occurs loudest at the tricuspid area, and it radiates to the right sternal border. Tricuspid regurg is enhanced by maneuvers or made louder by maneuvers that increase right atrial return, such as inspiration. So tricuspid regurgitation is a murmur that you can change based on the patient's breathing cycle. TR is generally due to right ventricular dilatation or, or bacterial endocarditis. Rheumatic fever can cause both tricuspid regurgitation and mitral valve regurgitation. The aortic stenosis murmur is a crescendo-decrescendo systolic ejection murmur. Generally, what you'll hear with aortic stenosis is an ejection click, and this ejection click occurs immediately after S1. So you can see S1 at the beginning of the diagram followed immediately by an ejection click. The ejection click is due to abrupt halting of the valve leaflets. This murmur is called crescendo decrescendo because the left ventricular pressure is much greater than that of the aortic pressure at mid-systole compared to end-systole, and therefore the murmur starts off pretty loud and then becomes softer throughout systole. The aortic stenosis murmur will be loudest at the aortic listening point, but then will radiate to the carotids as well as the apex of the heart, so you'll hear it in those places as well. These patients also present with what's known as pulsus parvus et tardis, which generally means that the pulse felt in the radial part of the wrist is weak compared to the heart sounds and will often be late compared to the heart sounds as well. So parvus means weak and tardis means late. And this is classic for aortic stenosis. Aortic stenosis can also lead to syncope and is generally in America due to age-related calcific aortic stenosis and also related to bicuspid aortic valve disease. The next murmur is that of a ventricular septal defect. A VSD murmur is a holosystolic murmur which is harsh sounding, but is not crescendo decrescendo. Generally, a VSD murmur is loudest at the tricuspid listening post, that is the lower left sternal border. The murmur of mitral valve prolapse is classically seen as a late systolic crescendo murmur with a mid-systolic click, which is seen in the diagram. This mid-systolic click is the hallmark of mitral prolapse and is caused by sudden tensing of the mitral valve cordy tendine. Mitral prolapse is the most frequent valvular lesion seen in the United States. It can also cause a reverberating murmur that is generally loudest at the S2 point. Mitral prolapse is usually benign, but it can predispose a patient to infective endocarditis and can also cause mitral valve regurgitation. The most common cause of mitral prolapse is myxomatous or Barlow's degeneration of the valve, which generally is just caused by thickening of the mitral valve, it, but it can also be caused by rheumatic fever, which is less common these days, or chordae rupture, in the setting of acute myocardial infarction. The mitral prolapse murmur is enhanced or made louder by maneuvers that increase total peripheral resistance, such as squatting or hand grip exercises. The next murmur we'll discuss is aortic regurgitation. Aortic regurgitation or insufficiency causes an immediate early diastolic high-pitched blowing murmur. Remember that this murmur is caused by a very high pressure in the aorta going back into the left ventricle across an insufficient aortic valve. Patients with aortic regurgitation will therefore have a very wide pulse pressure, and that is because the blood that should be in the aorta during diastole is going back into the left ventricle, and so the systolic pressure in the aorta 
will be much higher than that of the diastolic pressure in the aorta because all of the blood in the aorta is going back into the heart. These patients will present with bounding or water hammer pulses and head bombing. The most common causes of aortic regurgitation are aortic root dilatation, which is commonly seen in patients with Marfan syndrome. Also, bicuspid aortic valve or rheumatic heart disease can cause aortic regurgitation. Two more murmurs you should be aware of are mitral stenosis and a patent ductus arteriosus. Mitral stenosis has the characteristic opening snap. This represents the stiff mitral valve leaflets opening during diastole. The opening snap occurs immediately after S2. Mitral stenosis gives a delayed rumbling late diastolic murmur. Remember that the left atrial pressure has to be greater than the left ventricular pressure in order for this murmur to occur. This is why it occurs during diastole. Mitral stenosis is commonly caused by calcific disease or rheumatic heart disease. Chronic mitral stenosis can result in left atrial dilatation, which can cause atrial fibrillation over time. A mitral stenosis murmur is classically enhanced by maneuvers that increase left atrial return, such as expiration. You can also have the patient exercise to increase their cardiac output. This will increase the gradient across the mitral valve and increase the sound of the murmur. A patent ductus arteriosus gives a continuous or machine-like murmur. Generally, this murmur is loudest at the S2 point. Heart murmurs due to valvular defects on the right side of the heart generally increase in intensity on inspiration, whereas heart murmurs from the left side of the heart because of valvular defects increase in intensity on expiration. 